Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's about 7.30 p.m. right now. Hi, Stella. And Stella and I are going to have some girl time, right, Stella? She's so excited. I shut the door to upstairs so the boys can't come down because Stella likes some one-on-one -on -one play time. And, you know, they come down and sometimes they bother her. So we're just going to have some girl time, right, Stella? For example, this is one of Stella's favorite toys to play with down here. And whenever we play like this, then Boo and Simba want to play also. But sometimes Stella just likes likes to play without the boys. Right, Stella? I wonder if anyone's going to be crying at the door because the door's shut. I don't want to play too roughly with her because they just ate. So I don't want her like running and jumping all around. That is Stella's little Ikea bed. I was actually gonna throw it out and then what happened was I moved it um, from where it was to a location that was just temporary because I was gonna throw it out or I was gonna give it away basically, uh, probably donate it to a thrift shop or something. And I guess because I moved it, then all of a sudden she wanted to use it and she's used it ever since. She was just laying on it the other day. So she loves it. So she's like, no, don't get rid of it. Cats are, cats are funny like that. Sometimes they won't use something, but then if you put it in a different location, then they'll use it. I guess Stella doesn't want to play. She just wants to relax in her little bed. She likes to rest her chin on the headboard or the footboard, whatever that's called. Stella, you're so pretty. Good morning, Stella. It is 6.15 a.m. and here's Stella. She's laying on my towel on my bed. Hey, Stella. I'm getting ready for my day. And she's looking at me. She's like, what are you doing? Why are you up? Because we were sleeping late the last few days, right, Stella? Yesterday, we slept really late, right? We slept in till what, 930? Right? And today, right now, 615. So we're back on an early schedule. I wish you could see Stella's face from the angle that I see it. So this camera is a little bit offset right now, which is a little bit annoying. Hi, hey Stella. How are you? You're a pretty girl. Stella, you're so pretty. You're such a pretty girl. Look how pretty you are, Stella. Did you sleep well last night? Stella slept on the end of the bed last night. And then this morning, she's actually the one that woke me up. She woke me up around 5 a.m., right? Because she's looking for some pets. Stella likes to get pets in the morning, right, Stella? 
Oh, do you want some more girl time? You want some more girl time, Stella? She says, it's nice to have girl time without the boys sometimes. You want some spa time? You want me to wipe you with a wipe? You want me to get a wipe and wipe you? Stella likes spa time. I'm going to get a wipe and wipe her. Okay, Stella. I'm going to wipe you with the pet wipe. It's a little spa treatment, okay? There you go. Nice. One more. This pet wipe isn't very wet. There you go, Stella. Very nice. You look very pretty. Good morning, Boo. Boo's taking a little bit of a bath. I open the window for him. He can go smell the air on top of the cat tower. Hey, Boo. You're just gonna relax. Good morning, Simba. Simba jumped on the bed. I think he's enjoying the breeze. There's a little bit of a breeze coming through the window. Good morning, Simba. How are you today? Good? Good morning, Splash. Splash slept on this chair all night. It's a rainy, gray day today. It is 8.39 a.m. It is so dark today. It just feels so dark and cold and dreary, right, Boo? I'm trying to get some work done on my computers and I have to put on all the lights because it's so dark out. Here's Boo, he's taking a nap in his office. This dark weather's making him tired. Here's Stella, she's walking around the house and I wanted to show you what I just found. Someone vomited up their breakfast and they did it so silently that I did not even hear it. And I would say evidence points to Simba because Simba was going from plate to plate and eating the food that was left over by everyone. But I could be wrong. Maybe it was Boo. Uh, in either case, I'm going to check the security camera footage and see if I could see who it was. Stella, who vomited? Was that you? Did you vomit? I don't think it was Stella. But I do have to say that I am extremely happy with regards to the location of this vomit. Notice how it's on the floor and on neither of the rugs. I just watched the security footage and I can confirm that it was Simba. He vomited at about 7.32 a.m. You feel okay, Simba? And I am pretty much positive it's just because he was eating everyone's food. So he ate too much. And he was laying on the bed before and I did not notice anything unusual with him. So I don't think he's sick. I think he was just making a pig of himself. Simba, you feel okay? Simba, do you feel okay? You feel okay? Simba, you feel okay? Simba says he feels fine. He's just a little bit embarrassed. That's okay, Simba. I know you must have really enjoyed the food today. So today for breakfast, the cats had a primal turkey and sardine nugget, which Simba really likes. And they also had a few of the Nature's Variety Instinct Raw Chicken Bites. Except Boo doesn't really like those, um, so he had some canned cat food on his plate. But I think Simba went crazy over the turkey and sardine nuggets, and I think he tried to eat everyone's. Right, Simba? 
because I caught you trying to eat booze and I picked up the plate before you could do that. Good thing I picked up Boo's plate because you would have vomited up even more than you did. Okay, Simba, you relax, okay? You relax, you take it easy. It's 10, 11 a.m. Look how cute Boo is. I just got back from running a few errands and Boo's so comfortable. Here's Stella. She's been relaxing on the bed, all stretched out. And there's Splash, he's on the cat tower. Simba is still up in the penthouse. I'm not gonna disturb Splash to show you Simba, so. We'll check in on him later. When I was running errands this morning, I popped into a gourmet food market that I don't normally go to. And I saw that they had chicken hearts and chicken livers, and these are all fresh. And these are some of the ingredients that I use when I make homemade raw food for the cats. So I picked up about a pound of each. So if I'm making 10 pounds of homemade raw food, I'll use about a half a pound of hearts and half a pound of chicken livers. So a pound of each will be good for about 20 pounds of homemade raw food. So I'd like to thank the viewers who sent cash for the cats. Um, I just spent about six dollars of it on these ingredients for their raw food this month. So here's the hearts and the liver after they've been divided up. What I do is I portion them into Ziploc bags and I put the date on them and then these are going to go in a gallon freezer bag because these are only storage bags and then uh, they'll go in the freezer downstairs. Then when I'm ready to make raw food this month, depending on how much I make, uh, I'll either use just one of these or both of these. It's 11 a.m. and Boo wanted me to put one of his favorite mouse videos on the tablet for him. This one has a bunch of gerbils on it. Simba, aren't you going to play with me? Aren't you going to play with me? Simba was playing catch with me until he turned the camera on. Then all of a sudden, he just wants to roll around on the floor. What are you doing, Simba? It's about 4 p.m. Hey, Stella. Stella's taking a nap on her favorite spot on the bed. It's still a very dark and dreary day. Hey, Simba. How you doing? And here's Boo. He's hanging out on the cat tower in his office. This is Boo's office, this cat tower, and this cat tower. This is where Boo does his job. It's where he looks out the window. Right, Boo? Simba. 
Someone's at the door, boo. Someone's at the door, boo. You doing your job? You doing your job or are you hiding? There goes the delivery truck. It is 6.38 a.m. There's Splash. I guess he slept on top of the sofa cushion last night. I am super zoomed in from across the room, so I apologize if it's out of focus and shaky. The cats like to lay on top of the sofa cushion because there's a window behind it. And do you see what they do to the curtains? They move the curtains apart and then they look out. Here's Boo. Good morning, Boo. How are you today, Boo? So Boo slept on my bed, right Boo? And we slept so good last night. I didn't wake up once. Good morning, Simba. When I went to bed, Simba was sleeping on the cat tower. I don't think he's moved. He might have moved because him and Splash like to patrol around 5 a.m. Let's see where Stella is. Is she in the penthouse? There's Stella. Hey, Stella, you gonna get up? I don't know what time Stella climbed into the penthouse last night because when I went to bed, she was sleeping on one of the chairs in the living room. So it must have been some time in the middle of the night that she went up there. The cats love it up there. So today, Grandma and Grandpa are coming over and we're gonna take a ride to Pennsylvania. We're gonna have lunch in Cracker Barrel. That's where I got the Hydrox cookies last year. And then we are going to use up some free play that we won for a casino there and see if we could turn the free play into real money. Maybe we'll come back with some cash in our pockets. Right, Simba? Simba doesn't care. He's watching birds and squirrels. Look at this. Boo's like, turn my tablet on. I want to watch some mice. Okay, Boo. There we go. I just turned on one of his favorite videos. It's all these little mice or gerbils that come out of the holes. And the cats have Amazon Fire tablets. I find that these tablets are not as responsive when the cats put their paws on them. So when I give the cats an iPad, the iPad's more responsive to touch. So when they put their paws on it, then they could change the video, open apps, like, you know, they, uh, they paw it and things happen that shouldn't happen. And um, I find with the Amazon Fire tablets, if they paw at the tablets, uh, they don't change the video. Sometimes they can make a video stop, and then sometimes they can make it start again. I've seen that, especially with Splash. Um, but other than that, uh, they don't really change videos. But if I give them the iPad, for example, sometimes it only lasts a few minutes, and then I'll come back in the room. I'll be like, what did you do to it? Or what are you watching now? Uh, because when they touch it, um, it affects the controls on it because it's more sensitive. So I'll let Boo watch this video and I'm going to go get ready for my day. It's 7.20 a.m. I just walked past the room and saw this. They look like they're up to no good. Splash in Simba. Simba's like, not me. I'm just watching birds and squirrels. These two are very lucky that they never had to be separated. Splash and Zimba have been together since birth. Just one of the many reasons why they're the lucky ferals. Right, Splash? Right, Simba?
They're buddies. That's Splash. You love your brother? They love each other. And Boo is still watching his mouse video. This is a two hour video that he likes, so it keeps him entertained for a while. And here's Stella. Stella, you look so pretty today. But you look pretty every day, Stella. You're a very pretty girl. Stella had some playtime on the bed. Now she's watching birds. It's 8.20 a.m. and Boo and Splash just got in a fight a little while ago. And it really was for no reason. Boo was sitting here watching mouse videos. Splash walked into the room, sat down, I don't know, maybe five or six feet away from him. And then Boo looked at Splash. And I guess Boo didn't like the way Splash was looking at him. So he decided he's going to fight with Splash. And he ran over to him and they had a fist fight. You know, when the two cats kind of paw at each other. And there really was no reason for it unless something happened earlier and Boo was trying to get revenge. But I really think it was a situation where Boo just did not like how Splash was looking at him. Because what I've noticed lately is sometimes like a cat will look at you. And you're like, what is that cat thinking? Or that cat is like being really judgmental. Lately, Simba's been giving people the stink eye, right, Simba? Like, I'll look at Simba and he'll be looking at me with just this look of incredible judgment. I'm like, what is up with you, Simba? So maybe Splash gave Boo the stink eye and Boo didn't like it. It is 10.30 a.m. Is Boo doing his job? There's someone in the yard, Boo. He's keeping an eye on things. It was the mailman. Grandma and Grandpa should be here in probably around 45 minutes or an hour. So let's see what the cats are up to. Boo's relaxing here in his office. And here's Simba. Simba's relaxing in this cat tower. He's purring. Simba loves to hang out with Grandpa. When Grandpa sits on the floor and watches TV, Simba likes to sit with him, right Simba? Here's Stella, she's on top of the cat tower downstairs. She's been watching birds and squirrels through the window. I don't have any bird seed out right now, so I don't think there's much activity out there. But this is one of her favorite spots in the morning. I think Splash is in the penthouse because it's that time of day for him to be up there. Let's see. Hey Splash, how you doing?
It's about 12.30 p.m. and Grandma and Grandpa just got here. They've been sitting in traffic on the Cross Bronx Expressway. So we're probably like an hour or an hour and a half late from when we wanted to leave, but that's okay. Who's watching? Plate, Simba. Here's your plate, Bo. 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 Yeah, here's your plate, Bo. Here's your plate, Stella. No, that's not yours. Here you go, Simba. Simba. Hey, not yours. Here you go, Bo. And splash it not here. You want some more bull? Yes, go on. Yeah. They switch plates. Stella took Simba's plate and Simba took Stella's plate. And Boo got his own. Simba, Simba. It's 6.40 a.m. And I was just asleep because I want to sleep a little bit later today. And I just heard a cat burp really loud. And then I heard like a splash of liquid and I said, oh no. So I turned the light on and Stella was on top of the cat tower in this room. Let me show you what happened. See that? That's vomit. There are crunchies in it. And that's my curtain. So she vomited on the curtain. And there's more down here. Not a good way to start my day. Are you okay, Stella? You don't feel good? You don't feel good? I went to the kitchen to get some paper towels and some cleaning supplies. And it's 5.42 a.m., not 6.40. It's 5.55 a.m. I'm in the process of cleaning this up. And I'm just really happy that I heard it because I was sleeping and I was having a really bad dream. It was like the most bizarre dream. Grandma Farrell and I were in New York City and we were in Chelsea Market, except it wasn't really Chelsea Market. It was like this just really dark, demonic place. And um, we were just walking or riding through um, this area and it was like all dirt and skeletons and um, just really weird stuff and that's because I was watching TV last night and I forget what oh I was watching um, some paranormal television and 
some of this stuff from that TV show made its way into the dream. I have to not eat food late at night or watch uh, weird TV shows late at night because when I do sometimes then I have like bizarre dreams about them. So I was having like this really weird dream, you know, it was, you know, kind of disturbing. And then I heard that burp, like it was such a loud burp. And then the splash and I was like, oh, that's so not a good sound. So um, the cat tower is almost completely cleaned. The curtain, um, I'm having a hard time getting the stain out of it. So I'm going to have to take the curtains down and throw them in the laundry and see if they come out. That's okay, Stella. I know you don't feel good. I know you don't feel good. So last night, Grandpa and Grandma and I got home probably around 8 p.m. And we were hungry, so we had picked up dinner on the way home. And we ate that. And then I wanted to relax a little bit before I fed the cats because it was a really long day. And Grandpa gave the cats some crunchies because I said, yeah, just give the cats some crunchies. They'll have their snack and then they'll have dinner a little while later. So that's what happened. They had crunchies first and then a little while later they had their dinner. And they had a dinner that was normal for them. And that was it. That was their last meal. So they ate dinner later than they normally would have eaten it because I've been feeding them probably around 5 or 6 p.m. They've been eating earlier. And yesterday they probably had dinner around 9 p.m., maybe 9.30, probably 9.30, I think. So that was much later for them. So maybe it didn't sit well with Stella. I didn't see any cat grass in the vomit or anything unusual. I just saw digested food and some crunchies. Another thing she might have done is got around to all the other plates and eaten all the leftover food off of it. I don't know, but she's under observation today. I'm going to see if she eats her breakfast. If she doesn't want to eat, she might not want to eat now because, you know, she has an upset stomach. Um, so we'll see. And this is what I'm using. Nature's Miracle Advanced Stain and Odor Eliminator. This stuff works really, really well and has saved nearly every rug in the house. But I don't know if it saves curtains. I'm here with Stella and a Churu. So if Stella eats a Churu, it's a good sign. I just want to test her appetite. And Simba wants one and here comes Boo. They're not getting it. It's for Stella. Move over, buddies. You want it, Stella? Okay, let me let me open it. Let me open it. Good morning, Boo. Okay, to me it looks like Stella has a very good appetite. I'm sorry if this is out of focus because I'm just trying to do too many things at once right now. Okay, this is a good sign. Stella's eating the true roux. And we'll see how this sits in her stomach before breakfast. Hopefully there will be no problems. But it's a good sign she has an appetite and she's eating. So Boo and Simba just split a tuna and salmon squeeze up. And um, Stella had a little tiny bit of it. But I really don't want her sharing with them, just in case she has some kind of uh, bug. I don't want them getting sick from it. One of my wishes, and I don't know if it exists, so if, if you know anything like this, let me know, is I wish that there were some kind of pouches like this, like um, narrow, long pouches like this, um, that you could buy that you could fill up with like your own squeeze ups and then like reuse the pouches or even if it was almost like a like a ziploc uh pouch where you then toss it like you know freezer pops so i've seen like the empty freezer pop uh plastics is that what you call them the empty freezer pop bags or i don't know what what you would call that um empty freezer pop wrappers, but you know, those are quite bigger than like a squeeze up. Um, but I've never seen anything like 
more similar to this size, even if it's not exactly this size, something similar to this size. Because even when Ditto was here, but mostly like when the cats were sick, when they were had the vomiting and diarrhea, I really wish they sold um, like squeeze ups that are kind of like nutraceuticals that uh, were beneficial for certain purposes. Like I really wish there were squeeze ups you could buy for upset tummies, like squeeze ups that had natural supplements in them, uh, squeeze ups with herbs in them. And I was like, yeah, they don't sell those. I've never seen them. It would be a great idea if they did. Um, and then I was like, it would be great if I could just make my own so I could um, make my own um, so I could add whatever supplements I wanted and then give it to the cats that way. Like, I think it would be such a great idea to have some kind of squeeze ups with probiotics in them, like acidophilus, um, when the cats had their upset stomachs or, you know, when Ditto was on antibiotics, it would have been so good to have a squeeze up with probiotics in it. Um, or even like immunity boosting squeeze ups, that would be another great thing. Squeeze ups for upset stomachs, for example, with maybe like a little bit of ginger in there or some herbs for upset stomachs. Squeeze ups for cats with diarrhea or constipation. Like there's so many options available. And, you know, when cats aren't feeling well, squeeze ups or churus are a good texture for them. And it's something that they love to eat. So if anyone from a pet food manufacturing company is listening, I just gave you like a very, very good idea. It is 6.15 a.m. And half of me wants to crawl back into bed and go to sleep. And the other half of me just wants to get on with my day. It's about 10.30 a.m. And Boo's been relaxing on this chair all morning because yesterday when Grandma and Grandpa were here, Grandma told Boo that he looked very handsome on this chair because, you know, Boo looks very handsome near the color red. Right, Boo? So Boo doesn't want to get off this chair because Grandma says he looks so handsome on it. How you doing, Boo? Here's Simba. Simba is relaxing in a cat tower. How you doing, Simba? And here's Stella. Stella's laying in the round cat bed on the sofa downstairs. You feeling okay, Stella? Sometimes Stella likes to hang out here so no one bothers her. Sometimes she hangs out here when she doesn't feel very well. But she ate her breakfast. Did you enjoy your breakfast, Stella? She ate her breakfast, and for breakfast today, the cats had one of the primal raw turkey and sardine nuggets, which they love. And then they all had a little bit of Boo's favorite canned food, which is the wellness chicken and herring. And they had a few crunchies on top, not a lot, just like maybe 10 crunchies. So Stella ate well. She didn't gorge on everyone else's food. She just ate hers. Maybe she took a few nibbles on everyone else's, but I did not really see that. I just saw her eat her own. So she's under observation. That's why I'm checking on the cats right now. I just want to make sure no one else has been sick or that Stella is still not sick. I think maybe she just had indigestion this morning. I mean, that was a loud burp. And here's Splash. He's hanging out under this chair, not too far from Stella. How you doing, Splashy? It is now about 10.45 a.m. and I'm really happy because I got the stain out of the curtains and this is what I had to use. Uh, this is Spray and Wash Laundry Stain Remover. It says it's first time stain removal even in cold water. This worked great. So what happened was I put the curtains in the washing machine and I washed them with just laundry detergent and I looked at them and the stain was still there. It was less, but it was still there. You could still see the stain. Um, and then I sprayed it with this and I let it sit for like five minutes. And then I rubbed uh, the area with the stain. It says to rub it together. So I rubbed the material together and then I put it back in the washing machine and I washed it again with detergent. This time I added a little bit of Clorox bleach also. And it came out perfect without any stains. So I definitely think this spray and wash was helpful. And also uh, the fact that uh, these were white curtains 
and I could add a little bleach. I'm sure that helped a little bit also. So uh, if you're dealing with any kind of cat stains, you might want to check out Spray and Wash. I just came out of the laundry room and I was like, where's Stella? I don't see her in her round bed. She moved over here. How you doing, Stella? You okay? You just want to relax and rest? She said she didn't get much sleep last night because her tummy was bothering her. Okay, so you sleep good today, Stella, okay? Get a lot of rest today. She said she was up most of the night tossing and turning and trying to get comfortable. It's 1.30 p.m. Simba just had a few dried sardines, right, Simba? Here's Boo. He's still laying on the same chair. He's in the same spot where Grandma Farrell said Boo look handsome. Here's Stella. She's still laying on the couch downstairs. You okay, Stella? And here's Simba. He's following me around because he thinks he's going to get another dried sardine. Simba, you just had a snack. You just had your snack. You just had some dried sardines, Simba. Okay? Here's Boo. He heard the word snack. He said, what's going on down here? If other people are getting snacks, I'm going to get a snack too. Hey, Boo. So Boo was sniffing Simba's butt, and Simba did not like that. So he smacked Boo. Simba, you know what happens when you do that, right, Simba? Like, I understand you didn't want Boo smelling your butt. But you know he's going to retaliate. When you least expect it, he's going to retaliate. Because cats have very good memories. They remember things. You okay, Boo? Here's Splash. He's still under the chair. It's about 5 p.m. Look who's in the backyard. I've been wondering who's been digging up the grass. There's been some holes in the grass and it looks like it is this groundhog. Stella's watching from the back door. I just happened to look out the window and see this. Stella, do you see the groundhog? You see him out there? Or maybe it's a her. I don't know if it's a him or a her. I just tried to film it from the back door and it saw me and ran. They're very smart. There's Boo and Simba. Good job. Good job, Simba. Boo just wanted to smell your butt. I wonder what's going on with Simba's butt. So Stella likes to bite Simba's butt, and Boo likes to smell it. Simba, are you cleaning your butt enough? His butt always looks clean to me. You know how cats always put their butts in your face? It is 8, 18 p.m. and here's Stella. And Stella ate her dinner and she tried to eat what was left over on Boo's plate also. So it seems like Stella's feeling okay. She slept a good part of the day and then she had her dinner, she had a good appetite. Now she's relaxing in the living room. They'll have some crunchies later as a snack. And hopefully everything will be all right. Look what Splash and Simba got for their birthday. This is a hex bug scorpion. So I saw this at the Cracker Barrel the other day and it looked really interesting. And then I saw that it was a hex bug and the cats 
have had several hex bug toys in the past. They have an actual little hex bug, which they've enjoyed playing with. They also have a hex bug mouse, which I don't even know where that is. It's somewhere in the house. Uh, I hope to find it someday. And this looked really cool. So the first thing that I did when I was in the store was I tried to find more information online to see it in action. And it, it walks and it crawls and it looks like a spider and it's really creepy. At least I think it's really creepy. So here's what the other side looks like and the tail wiggles. Can you see that? So, so I'm going to open this and set it up and let's see if the cats like it. I hope they like it. So they had two different colors in the store. They had a red one, which is the one that I got. They also had an orange one. I decided on the red one because I know how much Simba loves red pom-poms. So I thought maybe he just likes the color red. We'll see. I just took it out of the packaging and now I have to figure out uh, the batteries and how to turn it on. So the on off switch is here by the tail. Wow. Gonna hit the door, hit the feeder. I guess the rug is too tall for it. Ooh, looks like he likes it. Splash just ran past. See, it, ha it has a bit of a hard time if a rug is too high. Oh, it has a pom-pom. It's under the chair. It's stuck under the chair. Ooh, you gonna get it out? Is Simba gonna get it? They're ready to pounce. Someone's gonna pounce. Who's gonna pounce on it? Simba says it tickles. It seems like Boo really likes this.
so the tail came off, but I think the tail comes off. I think the tail is detachable. Where is it, Boo? Simba said that is his bug, him and Splashes, because it's for their birthday. So Boo should let them play with it. I just put the tail back on. The tail just snaps back on. So the cats definitely like the scorpion. Especially Boo. It seems to be Boo's favorite more than anyone else. However, the others just might be a little more hesitant to try playing with it. Boo could be like an early adapter with that. One thing I do wish is that it would bounce off walls better um, and bounce off obstacles better. It seems to just want to keep going forward and kind of just get stuck there. But overall, I think the cats are going to have a lot of fun with this one. Right, Boo? Boo wants me to turn it back on. Boo says, what happened to it? I would say that this Hexbug Scorpion is a success. The cats enjoy it, especially Boo. Right now he's a little mad that it's not moving around anymore, but that's okay, Boo. We can play with it later, right? I walked out of their room for a few minutes, and that's what I heard. I heard the scorpion moving, and I said, what's going on? So it seems Boo still wants to play with it, even though it's not on. I'll put it on for him later. It's about 1 p.m. I just got home. So let's see where the cats are. 
Here's Boo. Here's Stella. She's laying on the bed. So she's back to her normal routine. Right, Stella? You feeling better? There's Splash. Hey, Splash. And here's Simba. Hello, Simba. How are you? It's about 1.20 p.m. and I just unloaded the car and these are all of the plants that I bought today at a local nursery. I like to get there a few days before Mother's Day because then the selection is really, really good. And today is a beautiful day. So I thought it would be a perfect time to go. And so I got some plants for Grandma Farrell for Mother's Day and then I got some plants for my yard uh, because there's been some changes to my front yard which I don't normally show in the videos. So last summer I lost a weeping cherry tree. It died from a disease. And a few weeks ago, I finally had the stump removed. So a few years ago, I had a flowering plum tree in my front yard also, and that died. I think it was the same disease that the weeping cherry tree died from. And that stump was also removed recently. So I used to have a bird bath on top of that stump. And then last year I had flowers all around the bird bath. It looked really nice. And it used to get a lot of butterflies and stuff. Uh, this year, I'm moving the bird bath over to where the weeping cherry tree used to be. So I'm going to plant some flowers around that this year. Uh, last year, I had some yellow lantanas. I have to plant stuff that deer don't like to eat. So this year, I got some more lantanas. I got these bandana cherry sunrise lantanas. This is what I wanted to plant last year, but I couldn't find these. So these should be like yellow, orange, and like a pink and a red. Uh, these should be like a nice multicolor. I got four of these. And I also got two of these salvias. And I've had a lot of luck with salvias. I have two salvias in uh, large flower pots and I've had them for years and every year they just uh, keep coming up and keep blooming and doing really well. So I thought uh, these might be nice around the bird bath also. For the past few years, it's kind of been a tradition to give Stella a bouquet of fresh uh, catnip for Mother's Day. And I saw this there. So this is a really nice uh, catnip plant. So she's gonna get this maybe today or tomorrow. I'll probably give it to her before Mother's Day. This is my catnip plant that was in the greenhouse uh, through the winter and it did well um, for most of the winter and I was picking fresh catnip off of this. Ditto enjoyed it and the inside cats enjoyed it but I don't know if it's gotten too hot or what but I recently trimmed it all down to almost nothing. Can you see the leaves have gotten really white? I don't know uh, if that's like a sunburn or what but we'll see what happens with that. And then this is also another catnip plant and the leaves on here are turning red and I read that um, that's from like lack of nutrients in the soil. I could be wrong about that, but I did fertilize it the other day, so maybe it'll start doing better. Uh, the new growth is looking good on it, so we'll see how this one goes. I also got grandma and grandpa these kakuza plants. I guess kakuzzi is the plural. These are the uh, long Italian squashes that grow really, really well. And uh, grandma Farrell has posted quite a few videos of some of the meals and dishes that she makes with the squash. And there's really only two stores around here that I've ever seen sell these plants. One is the nursery I was in today, and then another one is a nursery on Long Island. And it's the kind of thing where you have to buy them when you see them because they go really fast and then they don't get any more in. So I got them six plants and then I got myself three plants. So last year I didn't really have any luck growing these. The year before was awesome. I had a lot of squash, so uh, we'll see how these do this year. I got myself some of these husky cherry red tomatoes. These are supposed to uh, be like a compact bush tomato and they're supposed to do well on patios. And I'm thinking I'm gonna try uh, maybe one or two in the patio and then one of these in the greenhouse and we'll see how it goes. And then I also got this. It says this is a hippo rose. It is a polka dot plant and I've always liked these because of the pink foliage and 
these can be uh, an outside plant for the warm season or this can be an indoor plant. I'm actually thinking I might make this an indoor plant because it does well in shade and it's supposed to be cat safe. So if they nibble on a little bit of it, there's not gonna be an issue. Like if they eat a lot of it, they might get vomiting or diarrhea, but it's supposed to be non-toxic to cats. And I think this would look nice inside. And I seem to do well with plants that grow well in shade. Uh, for the inside because I don't have a lot of bright sunny window spaces that are not occupied by cats so I got grandma Farrell these geraniums for Mother's Day I thought they were really nice they're like a salmon color and I got a four of these but you know once you plant them they do get bigger and they do spread a bit and then lastly I got this crepe myrtle it says it is an enduring red crepe myrtle flowering shrub so when I had to have the flowering plum tree removed from the yard I then planted a crepe myrtle in its place and it did really really well uh, during the warm months but it didn't last through the winter um, so that's why I eventually put a bird bath there instead and so this year, since I had the stump removed, I'm gonna try this. This is supposed to grow to about maybe five feet tall by about five feet wide. So I think it would be nice in the location that I have for it. And I really like all of the, the red blooms and we'll see how this goes. And this is my new greenhouse. It was assembled last October. So it's almost seven months old. It lasted through the winter really well. I did wrap it in plastic for some extra insulation and protection, uh, but it's a really nice size. It's six feet by eight feet. And let's take a look at what's going on inside. So these are some new plants that I recently got on the left uh, right here is some lemon thyme and over here is some oregano. I recently picked up some strawberry plants also. So um, I planted one in here. These are some cucumbers that are growing nicely. They are pickle bush cucumbers, so we'll see how those how those do. And this is my fig tree that survived the winter in this greenhouse. It's doing really well also. It's very small. Last year it was very small. This year it's a little bit bigger than it was last year. And then in here on the left, I'm growing some portulacas for the patio. They do really well in the patio. And on the right, I have some four o'clocks. I've never grown those before, so they're doing well right now, and I need to figure out where I'm gonna plant those. Right here, I have a blueberry bush. I don't know if you could see that, but there's actually blueberries on it. And there's some more blueberries. So one of the things that I would like to do in this greenhouse is provide protection for plants that the animals normally get to before I do. For example, blueberries, uh, the local critters always get all the fruit before I get any. So maybe by keeping it in a greenhouse, uh, I'll have better luck with that. The same thing goes for the strawberries. They always eat all my strawberries. I never get any. And uh, sometimes for herbs also, sometimes they'll just munch on my herb plants. So I'm hoping that with this greenhouse, I'll, uh, I'll have more for me and less for the wildlife. Then in this pot, um, I believe it's an aronia cherry or like a, a choke cherry kind of uh, plant or bush. It's gotten really, really big since it was in this greenhouse. It was less than half the size when I put it in here uh, last fall. Right here we have some daisies. Here we have a dead fern. I thought it would do better in here. It's not doing better. Here we have some parsley that is doing really well. These are some marigolds that I planted a few months ago. Those are doing really well. And next to it are some impatience. Those are doing really well. Those are both grown from seeds. On the bottom here on the right, I have some rosemary and that survived the winter in the greenhouse also. Um, I have another strawberry plant that I recently planted. And I have some geraniums that also survived the winter. I've never had geraniums survive the winter before, but in this greenhouse they did. So I'm really happy about that. I have about three flower pots of geraniums, which I'm gonna be bringing out onto the patio soon. And back in that corner, there's another geranium plant. And here in the middle, I have my Meyer lemon tree. Uh, this is about three years old. So it's first winter it's spent in Boo's room. It was kind of next to the windows and did not do very well there. And then it's second winter was spent in the old greenhouse that I had, the like soft plastic greenhouse. 
it survived the winter it did a little bit better there and then this past winter it did really really well in this greenhouse and I don't know if you could see it there's actually little lemons forming on this lemon tree so it might be the first year that I actually get fruit on it see the little lemons right now they're green but I'm assuming as they get larger and uh, as they ripen they will turn yellow so this plant will be put outside also uh, relatively soon I have another strawberry plant and then I have a bunch of these Calibracoa. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, but these are deer resistant. And I had these in my front yard last year. I had these in planters uh, near my front steps and they bloomed all season. They were amazing. They did so well, they got so big. So I got four more of these uh, for this year. And I just realized that I forgot to buy potting soil today. I need to buy potting soil so I could put these in the planters and put them outside. So I'm gonna have to go back out. And since this greenhouse is bigger than the last one and it's much nicer than the last one, I also have this little table and chairs in here. And it's really nice just to sit here and get some sun, especially on a colder day. And it's kind of like having another little room outside. It's really nice when I want to get away from the cats for a while. It's about 6.30 p.m. right now, and there's Simba. He's hanging out in the window. I think every cat has been in this window today. Actually, I know every cat has been in this window today. I saw Stella there a little while ago. Before her, it was Splash, and before him, it was Boo. It was such a beautiful day today. We had sunshine and we had warm weather. It was high 70s, maybe even 80 degrees. I don't even wanna go inside because it's so nice. So I took the geranium plants out of the greenhouse and I put them outside and I actually uh, put them in new pots. I felt like the pots were too small for them. And these are the biggest geranium plants that I've ever had because they're the oldest geranium plants that I've ever had. Usually they don't survive the winter these are the first plants I've ever had that survived the winter. I did have to cut off um, some of the like dead blossoms and just some broken things. So this is what this one looks like right now. And here's the other one. I do have some incense burning in this flower pot. I have two sticks of incense burning just to try to keep the bugs away. I don't know if these solar lights are still working or what. They're really old. I'm just going to put them here and see if they go on. Um, I might just get rid of them. And I do see some portulacas coming up in these flower pots. So that's what I normally like to plant in these. Uh, they do really well. And I planted the little cherry tomatoes. I have one in this flower pot. I have one in this flower pot. And there's one here in the greenhouse. The azalea is blooming. I planted my deer resistant flowers in these planters that I got at the Christmas tree shops a few weeks ago. I like them because they were white and they also are on little pedestals. These are the kind of flowers that can cascade down the side of the flower pots. So I think these would look nice if they did that. I planted the crepe myrtle bush and I hope it grows. And I planted the salvias and the lantanas around the birdbath. I also replanted the bulbs that I had to take out when the stump grinder guy came a few weeks ago. So I had um, hyacinths and I think those are grape hyacinths. Um, they were planted around the birdbath where the birdbath used to be. And I dug those bulbs out and I just replanted them. So hopefully they'll take and then next year they'll come up again. So uh, those will be the spring flowers and then more toward the birdbath would be the summer flowers. The salvia will come up next year, but I don't think the lantanas will come up next year. The ones that I had from last year did not survive the winter. So I think those are just annuals. It is 11.15 a.m. Let's check on the cats. Here's Simba. He's resting in this cat tower. Simba woke me up about 5 a.m. because he was walking on top of me when I was sleeping in my bed and then he decided to curl up like right next to me half on top of my legs and um, then I was giving him some pets and he was purring so loudly and then I fell back asleep well it looks like he's taking a nap Today is a very good day to take a nap. It is rainy and gray, but at least it's not very cold. It's relatively warm. Here's Boo. 
He's been taking a nap on this chair. I put a little blanket on the chair to kind of protect it. But now he saw the camera, so he got up. How you doing, boo? You doing okay, boo? So today was fish day for the cats. They had some uh, Earthborn Holistic Harbor Harvest for breakfast. Boo loves fish day because he loves any kind of canned food, right, Boo? Boo says no, he doesn't love any kind of canned food. He only loves some kinds of canned food. He's getting a little bit pickier with this canned food. Let me rub your belly. See how he, he moves my hand? He says, no, don't rub me there. I want you to rub my, my cheeks. I want you to rub my face. It's 1.30 p.m. and I'm taking a break to have some lunch. I've been working on my computer all morning. And here's Boo. He's still hanging out on the chair. I just wanted to show you how handsome he looks. Boo, you look so handsome on this chair. Grandma was right. Grandma was right when she said you look handsome on this chair because you do, Boo. You look very handsome on this chair. He's been laying on this chair all morning. Boo, how handsome are you? I'm here with Simba and the scorpion. And Boo. And it is mail time. Let's open up the mail and see what the cat's got. Simba, you gonna help me? Here, you wanna open this side? Open this side. No? You'd rather play with the scorpion? So the cat's got an envelope. Oh, look at this, Simba, it looks like you. Simba, isn't that nice? Look at the card, it looks like you, Simba. But Simba has a very unique nose, so you could always tell Simba, because I've never seen another cat with a nose like Simba's. Simba has a little line that goes up his nose. The vet used to call it a zipper nose. This is pretty. It says, this letter and card may be read publicly and photos. Oh, that's good. Greetings to Lucky Farrell's mom, Boo, Stella Splash, and Simba from Shmoo, Scruffy, Marble, Yuzi, Spats, Gandalf, and Yowler, and Linda and Jim. Thanks for the videos. May you all live your best lives. That's very nice. Thank you so much for this lovely card. Let's check out this letter. It says, Dear Lucky Farrell mom, I wrote you last summer and told you I had been watching the first year Boo videos and was up to episode 74. I've been on medical leave since late February due to surgery, which went well. So I've had a chance to watch a bit more. I am currently on Boo year two, episode 32. You are in the month with no crunchies, testing out the stroller and there's been a few ditto sightings so far. Also, I tried minnows last night. Half of my cats like them. All along, I have also been watching some of the older kitten videos and the newer videos, including the later Hydrox and Ditto videos. By the way, I cried as soon as I saw the Ditto RIP video pop up. I was so sorry to hear about each of these cats passing. Ditto was so lucky to have the excellent care you provided. I first stumbled on your videos because I was caring for feral cats and I was looking for information. I have enjoyed relating to things you experience with the cats, especially every bit of progress. I know the thrill when a cat first lets you pet them or even tolerates you being near them. I also get a lot of ideas from you. Thank you so much for documenting your experiences with your cats.
Right now, Simba and Splash are in the next room. They're just about to get into a fight, I could tell. If you hear scratching noises, it's because they're on the cat towers. So we are the Havilla Ferals in Detroit. We have seven cats we feed, but two of them shelter somewhere else. This all started at the beginning of the pandemic when both my husband and I were home. The cats were a great distraction at that time. I've enclosed some photos so you can meet the cats. We have insulated feral villa cat houses in the backyard with straw. We don't have outdoor electrical outlets, but we may get some installed to provide heat in the winter. All of our cats are fixed. I was able to get all of them to just go into a trap by getting them familiar with it and then feeding them in it. Yuzi came to us already fixed. He was TNR'd based on the left ear clip. I had to use a drop trap on Yowler because other cats would just go in the standard trap and Yowler would not go near it. I would love to bring cats in the house, but my husband has severe allergies. I am grateful he supports me in this. It started with one kitty and then it spiraled out of control. My husband loves the kitties too though. He has been taking over while I recover. I always need to wash hands after touching cats and if they get on my lap, I have to change clothes. My physical therapist and a student, I am a high school teacher, convinced me to make videos. I make amateur videos and post them to Google albums, which I share with family and friends. I am now working on a parody of the song Closing Time. It will be called Feeding Time and will describe the cat's antics at feeding time. You know, they get underfoot or try to trip you. They swat at each other while food is being dished out and meow like they are starving. I wanted to mention a few more things. You had two young raccoons in recent videos. Last week, we actually saw one of our cats, Yuzi, eating side by side with a raccoon at our feeding area. Unbelievable. Also, one of my favorite memories is Shmoo spending most of the summer of 2020 chilling in the shade of the day lilies. I have enclosed a folded paper labeled private with my email if you want to contact me or get a link to my videos in Google Photos. Thanks again. I'll keep watching. Linda B. Thank you so much for this lovely letter, Linda. I'm very happy to hear about all of the cats that you are caring for. That is so nice of you. And of course, thank you for watching the videos on this channel. And now let's check out the photos. This is Shmoo. He's a male. His current age is about four. He's the first kitty from February of 2020. Shmoo showed up in my backyard meowing for food. He was friendly. I found out my neighbor had been feeding and providing shelter for him. He loved pets and we bonded during the pandemic when I worked from home starting in March. He is playful and sweet. He plays with marble, tolerates scruffy, but chases or swats or avoids the other cats. He looks a lot like Boo. Doesn't he look like Boo? Thank you very much for this very generous donation. This will be put toward cat supplies. And who is this? This is another beautiful black cat that looks like Boo. This is Scruffy, who's a male. His current age is about five. He's the second kitty from April of 2020. And the photo was taken in the summer. Scruffy is a cuddle bug. Oh, that's kind of like Ditto. Ditto is a cuddle bug. I would see him in the tall grass at first. He would watch me with Shmoo. My husband was the first to pet him. One day he watched me with Shmoo and approached me to get on my lap. I bought a reclining lawn chair so we could have cuddle time comfortably. He's also very playful with the pole toys. That is so cute. He sounds like such a nice cat. And who's this? Look at this cat. Look at the coloring on the face. I love that flash of orange. This is like one of Splash's girlfriends. This cat's name is Marble. It's a female. Its current age is about three. It's the third kitty from June of 2020. Marble is like everyone's feisty little sister. She always wants to play. Marble and Shmoo love to wrestle with each other. She gets along best with all the other cats. She loves to get on her hind legs to catch treats and often even eats it before it hits the ground. She is first to come if I have a pole toy. She's a vocal gal. That is so nice that you've paid attention to the different personalities that all the cats have. I think that's really important to do. It's really important to acknowledge uh, their uniqueness. 
And look at this, there's two of the cats playing with this cat. It, I think it's like a, a tree for uh, crunchies. It's like a crunchy tree, that's what I used to call it. The cats have one, but because of the ant situation here, I can only use it like in the winter time. This is Schmoo and Marble at the Cadet Tree. I was using this before I saw you get one. I was delighted to see it in the videos. My cats love it. Sometimes I accidentally call Schmoo Boo. Schmoo and Boo look a lot alike. And their names even rhyme. That's a really cute photo. And who is this? Look at this cat. This is a very pretty cat. This is Yusi, who's a male. His current age is about three. He's the fourth kitty. First sighting July 2020, then October 2020. The other cats chased Yusi off in July 2020, and they did not like him in October. He and Scruffy had a fight. He's still stuck around. They're still swatting at times, but they seem to all tolerate each other usually. Yusi is very friendly with people, even strangers. I'm trying to get him adopted. I had him adopted briefly, but a family member was allergic. He did well as a house cat. I think that's wonderful if you'd be able to get UC adopted. He looks like a very sweet cat. And who's this? Here we have what looks like a tuxedo cat. This is Spats. He's a male. His current age is about six. He's the fifth kitty from January of 2021. This photo is from the spring of 2021. He loves to rub against Yuzi, who swats him every day. That is so funny. Maybe they're related. Spats is the most skittish of the cats, a lot like Hydrox. I had seen him in the neighborhood for years. My husband got him to take a few pets at treat time. I was able to pet him just before Christmas 2021. He still just lets us pet him occasionally with food and if only a couple cats are around, he will play with the pole toy. I think it's really good that he's able to play and I'm sure over time he'll become more comfortable and uh, more relaxed around you and your husband and people in general. And who's this? Look at this cat. He looks fierce. This is Gandalf the Grey. He's a male. His current age is about three. He's the sixth kitty from January of 2021. Photo was taken in the spring. Gandalf would watch us from a distance but loves pets now. He always wants to rub on our legs. He used to shelter next door in Shmoo's old house, but one day he showed up with a collar. Someone adopted him. He still comes around to eat with us a lot, especially treat time. I think that's so wonderful that someone adopted him and that he still likes to come and visit. And look at this cat. This cat looks like he has a lot of personality. This is Yowler, a male, because he yelled constantly before he got fixed. His current age is about three. This is the seventh kitty from May 2021. The photo was taken in winter. I met Yowler as he meowed to me from the yard behind my house. I thought he was Yusi at first. He made his way to my yard. He was covered with burrs on one side and tail. He would eat with our cats and come through the yard daily, spraying everything. We got him fixed and had burrs shaved off. He is friendly when he feels like it with no more spraying. I caught him with a drop trap. See, I told you he looked like he had a lot of personality. And look at this. Yeah, this is a very familiar sight. Three cats standing outside of the door waiting for dinner. They're so cute. It is so nice of you to take care of these cats, to feed them, and to look out for their well-being. Once again, thank you very much for this beautiful card, for the lovely letter, for the generous donation, and for sharing photos of your cats along with their stories. We hope you're doing well. We hope all of your cats are doing well and keep up the great work with regards to them. And here we have another envelope. This says, I wanted to send you a simple expression of my thanks. Look at the cat, that's so cute. Thank you very much. Oh, that's a very happy cat. Love from Larry, Carol, and Boo D. To Lady Farrell, Grandma and Grandpa Farrell, Stella, Boo, Splash, and Simba. And the cat's got two PetSmart gift cards. Thank you so much. These will be put to very good use on cat supplies. And here's another card. This 
This says if you can guess the number printed inside this birthday card, you will win one million dollars. I'll even give you a hint. It's between three and five. Well, then I would guess number four. 4.3587652310865564. Aw, oh, so close. Yeah, that was very close. That's really cute. Nicole LaRue and Zoe, my cat. This says, happy anniversary, Lady LF. Another year is over, and I hope we are going the best of our lives in a few months. Please make you a good gift and don't share it with anybody. I am always waiting your videos, looking for the life of your furry children's and also your comments from Nicole LaRue. Thank you so much for this very cute birthday card and for your very generous gift. I will have a lot of fun spending it. I don't know what I will be spending it on yet, but it was very nice of you to think of me. And thank you so much for watching the videos. And here we have a package and this came all the way from Austria. So let's open this and let's see what's going on in here. Oh no, I hope I didn't ruin anything. And here's a card and I don't know what it says. It looks like it's in German. Keiner ist wie du und das ist deine Stärke. I don't know what that means, but it's a very cute cat. It looks like a baby ditto. Doesn't that look like a baby ditto? Ditto was probably such a cute kitten. Could be a baby Hydrox. This says to LF, please accept my condolences on the passing of Hydrox and Ditto over the Rainbow Bridge. They were such endearing kitties and I loved seeing their personalities and evolution in your videos. Here are cat toys that my own feral cat Carissa enjoys. She loves pom-poms too like Simba. And also here are gold coins from Austria with years chosen to commemorate Hydrox and Ditto. The card translates to nobody is like you and that is your strength. Kind regards, Kathy, Carissa, and Sammy. Thank you so much, Kathy, for these gold coins to commemorate Hydrox and Ditto. That was very nice of you. And here are the cat toys and the cats have never had toys that look like these. You know what these remind me of? Have you ever seen the original Willy Wonka movie 1971 with Gene Wilder and they had the Everlasting Gobstoppers? Don't these look like the Everlasting Gobstoppers from that movie? I think the cats are going to have a lot of fun with these. Thank you very much, Kathy, for your support and for the toys and the card and the gold coins. That was very, very nice of you for thinking of Hydrox and Ditto. And look who's here, it's Splash. Splash even came out to say thank you. Right, Splash? Splash is so handsome. watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.